Introduction to Transformation Optics. So this is really a design process where we're going to design a device that bends fields and flows waves along a prescribed direction or along prescribed lines. And so step one of this process is to define some kind of spatial transform that tells you how we're going to flow waves or how we're going to bend fields. So on the, the left here, I'm showing maybe we want to flow waves along a 90 degree bend. That's a perfectly valid input to transformation optics. More traditionally, we're looking at a coordinate transform. And if we look at the blue lattice in the background here, that is our transformed coordinate system. The original one was standard X, Y, Z, but what you can see is that we've bent some of those coordinate axes. And these red lines in the original coordinate system were just passing straight through. And so a wave in ordinary X, Y, Z, ordinary vacuum of space would just travel straight. But then if we decide we want to somehow bend our coordinates, now the path of the wave would follow the red lines. And in this case, we're making a cloak and the waves would avoid this region in the middle. And ideally no waves pass through here and the wave perfectly reconstructs itself on the other side. And thus we've perfectly hidden or cloaked some object at the interior. But all we have here is just a coordinate transform saying what we want to do. There's additional steps that we have to do. And in a nutshell, this step is transformation optics. There's following steps more because we want to actually realize a device that does our design, but this step is transformation optics. So we have some coordinate transform. And so we go to Maxwell equations and we apply it to the coordinates, which really enters in through these curl calculations. That's where we're taking derivatives as X, Y, and Z. And there's a property of Maxwell's equations called form invariance, and that's something we'll get into, but it allows us to take all of the math that's modifying X, Y, Z here in the curl operations and literally just move that math over to the material properties. And what we come away with now is our standard Maxwell's equations, but with crazy permeability and permittivity. And I'm just showing what one of those might look like. And so these are crazy values of permeability and permittivity. And by crazy, even though maybe we started with vacuum of space, perfectly isotropic, you know, boring materials, we end up with something that's anisotropic, has both permittivity and permeability, and can have extreme values. For example, negative values, value approaching zero, values approaching infinity, or just really, really high values. That's it. Transformation optics, it's done here. It does not tell us actually how to realize this permeability and permittivity. It just stops there. And in fact, a lot of the papers in the literature now, they'll take this mu and epsilon and they'll import something like this into a simulation, run a simulation, and voila, they say that their device works. But I would challenge you to take this to a machine shop and tell them to build that. Clearly, there's steps missing that I think need to be discussed when it comes to transformation optics. And that's really my steps three and four. So step three, we need to figure out how to realize those values of permeability and permittivity. And so here comes the idea of metamaterials. And maybe this isn't always necessary if your permeability and permittivity are you know, isotropic, maybe dielectric only and reasonable values, we can do them with ceramics. But that's not often the case. And in fact, we have to resort to metamaterials in order to realize these crazy values. Now, even more, there's different values in different locations and different orientations. And so this might prescribe different looking metamaterials in different spots, different sizes, different orientations, different patterns. And OK, so here we've mapped what it might need to look like at each spot. But then the very last step is then how we generate an overall lattice that, that works, that doesn't have defects, that's put together in a smooth and continuous way. So that's the last step. We place the metamaterials or really whatever we have in whatever location, in whatever region we've defined our transform that would realize these permeabilities and permittivities. 
That's our finished device. So in fact, these last two steps are rarely discussed in the literature. And in my opinion, I think it's a critical part of transformation optics, even though technically once we've calculated that mu and epsilon, transformation optics is done. We just realize there's additional steps in order to realize those devices and make them a reality. So here is a neat design that I did just for fun. And uh, my university, University of Texas at El Paso, our symbol, I guess, is the pickaxe because we're, we have a mining history. And so I decided to cloak a pickaxe. And the cloak itself is in the shape of the outline of actually our older UTEP logo now. We've, we've changed. And so that's no longer part of our logo, but it used to be. And inside this black line would be a big U-T-E-P. Anyway, I just decided to borrow that outline for the cloak. So outside is just air. Inside is crazy stuff. And of course, inside the pickaxe is nothing. But what we can see is all this crazy stuff inside the cloak does weird things with the wave. But at the edge of this cloak, the wave reconstructs itself. So what we get at the output is a nice looking plane wave. But we can see it's not actually perfect. And that's just because I don't fully realize some of the extreme values that are required in here. And there's a resolution limit to the simulation. Uh, but in theory, this would work perfectly, but because we had to do this numerically, it's not quite perfect. But what you can see is that it's really, really good. And so we would call this cloaked. And somebody observing the wave here would not know that there's a pickaxe. And in fact, the, the more round or ordinary you make the shape, the better your cloak will work. These sharp edges are very, very challenging because they, they bend fields very sharply. And that's where we get these really extreme values. And that's just hard to resolve in any kind of simulation. I want to finish this video just with some quick notes about transformation optics. And in following videos, we'll get in about how to actually implement transformation optics. At its core, transformation optics is just a coordinate transformation technique. And we take the math from X, Y, Z that we apply to Maxwell's equations and move it over to the permittivity and permeability. And we come away with this map of permittivity and permeability as a function of position. That is it. After that, transformation optics is done. I also, in some ways, don't like the title transformation optics because that seems to imply we can only do this for optical frequencies. But in fact, this method applies to any frequency, radio frequency, microwave, millimeter wave, terahertz, infrared, optic, X-ray, and beyond. And I could probably say that more devices have been built and tested at microwave frequencies than optical frequencies. So I'm not sure if that's true, but I, I think it's close to true. But it applies to any frequency. So keep that in mind, not just optics. Some people call it transformation electromagnetics. Other people just call it spatial transforms. Call it whatever you want. I decided to call this transformation optics because I think it seems to be the most popular title right now. So at the output, we get a permittivity and we get a permeability that's a function of position. So those are changing as a function of position. And so how we realize those values of permittivity and permeability is also different as a function of position. And this is something we need to consider when we build the overall lattice so that we don't have any discontinuities or anything like that. Now, transformation optics, as I mentioned, it ends after we get this crazy map of permittivity and permeability. It doesn't, it ends there. It doesn't say anything about how we're going to realize those values. It's us that knows, oh, okay, we probably need some metamaterials. Maybe we need some high dielectric constant ceramics or other things like that. But that's all us. And those are all steps that really come after transformation optics. So typically what we get, typically we'll start transformation optics with vacuum of space, although that's not necessary. And we'll typically get permeability and permittivity that are anisotropic. They have extreme values. So that means values close to zero, values approaching infinity, things like that. And so this really dictates that we use things with metamaterials and we need metals for that. So it's going to be very difficult to do transformation optic devices without metals. Now there's a lot of work going into transformation optics to try to ease this so we can make things that are dielectric only, don't require permeability. 
or that are not anisotropic or that don't have such extreme values. Lots of work going into that. And I think I already mentioned this, but uh, transformation optics also sometimes called transformation electromagnetics. I tend to like that title a little bit better because it really kind of applies it applies to any frequency, not just optical frequencies. But I still think it's more commonly called transformation optics. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching this video. I love hearing your stories about how these videos helped you. I also love answering your questions. So please tell me your stories and ask your questions in the comment section. I promise I will try to answer every single question that's asked. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. I also recommend visiting the official course website that has links to the latest versions of the notes, the latest videos, and there's lots of other resources to help you learn, including implementations in MATLAB. I'll see you in the next video.